All right, well, good morning. It's, uh, I think, about 6. Been up for a few hours, but we're out at the farm, and I'm going to give you a real quick tour because it's harvest day, and I will not even possibly have time to do something like that later. So stick with me, and I'll show you what's been growing on in the last month or so. Right, here we are in the heated greenhouse although we are not heating it right now it's beautiful weather this is just the last of our uh, uh, sort of first second round of, of transplants um, a lot of this stuff will be out within the next five six hours this whole area in here is going to be getting ready for 12,000 more beets which we are going to be seeding out because at the end of the month we will be harvesting the first batch Moved our microgreens operation in here. We're going to see how this works. They sure do dry out faster in a greenhouse. Twice a day watering is a thing. But we've got a little bit of extras. And they're looking wonderful. I guess we can kind of start over here. I've got almost a full row. So that's got to be at least 80 feet. That is five different varieties of a winter radish or a daikon type radish. So we've got a fruit radish, which I think that is right there. Uh, we have a wasabi radish. We've got a purple one, a white daikon, as well as uh, another green in there. And those are actually doing really well. Uh, we just started harvesting them and getting them to customers last week. We have gone through a boatload of pearl onions. So these are what the folks usually grow if they're doing pickling onions. And they grow... These are probably too big for pickling onions. Pickling. Why did I say it like that? Pickling. But these are absolutely wonderful for a 60-day variety. Uh, we also have a white one that's growing. I don't know if we can show you those. There you go. Um, anywho's, those have been wonderful. And we have a bunch more seeded out in succession. These are the Italian... Cipollini's. This is the Blanco de Maggia. Um, and then we've got, what do I have? I've, I, I should have a gold one in here as well as a, a purple one hiding in there somewhere. But anyway, that's an 80-day variety. And both the pearl onions and the Cipollini varieties do not need... Um, they don't need the longest day to start bulbing up, which is super important to me. And, uh, yeah, we will be tearing all of these out, and I will be slapping something else in there probably within the next week. This was a bed of carrots, and it's still, I don't know, two-thirds of a bed of carrots, but we will be harvesting a bunch of that today for our deliveries and for the markets coming up in the week. This bed here, I, I'm trying to think, it had a half a bed of kohlrabi and then a half a bed of carrots, which clearly has been harvested. I intermixed purple and green basil, and we've got three different varieties of tomatoes here. These were planted fairly recently. Like, the tomatoes over there have been in for a while, and they're easily double the size. But we've got two different whites over here and an orange. And now on to our celery. This is exciting. I'm, uh, I'm pretty motivated about this. This is a Chinese giant red, and it is doing remarkably well, and it looks, it just looks fantastic. And this is uh, one of the varieties of green that we're growing. And again, just, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but the colors are just so vibrant. And then we have our favorite, which is the white. And it is absolutely gorgeous. We have been, uh, actually last night, what did we do? We did a little stir fry, stew meat stir fry. And uh, we used the leaves in there, the stock, and what flavor. It's just starting to fill in. We are not intending to harvest this as a full head. We are going to pull the largest stalks off the sides of each plant and bundle those up. And I think we'll try and do a red, green, white combo for markets. These tomatoes are romping along, romping. This one here is a uh, Berkeley tie-dye. So that's gonna be a bunch of different colors when that, uh, 
when that ripens and matures. And then this one looks so cool. It's a uh, blueberry cherry. There's a good shot right there for you. Look at the crazy color on that. And as they ripen, they will get more of the top color, more purple or blueberry looking. But yeah, no, they are coming on. And then we have a, uh, a strange variety back here. It's a pineapple. It's supposed to be a very large one. And uh, I mean, we've already got quite a few setting. The plants look a little weird. Like the branches grow kind of oddly and at weird angles, but we'll keep pruning them and keep stringing them up. Something I don't think I've shown you folks is we're trying kind of a unique crop here, here in zone 3B, but we're gonna, we're trying some ginger this year. Here's a shot behind the tomatoes. Now, you're probably thinking that those aren't gonna get enough light, but very soon these tomatoes will be up and pruned so that they will get a ton of morning light. And from everything I've read, they can handle being in a bit of shade. We put these in after the radishes. So that would have been um, mid to late April. And I started these inside probably January. I'm very, very happy with how they're doing. They're all inching up on, you know, anywhere between 12 and 24 inches high. And they're looking pretty nice to me. Everywhere that I planted, it had one stalk. Okay, so I, I, I'll show you what it looks like if you want. But anyway, I planted one. So you can see that piece has expanded underneath and sent up two new shoots. This one's got four, that one's got three, that one's got three, and as you go, so, I mean, we've already at least tripled what I planted, which is pretty cool. I'll keep you posted on this. All right, this is the very last little bit of an entire bed of beets. I started those indoors, oh, February. Then we transplanted in March. And then look at the size of these beets. Like they're absolutely wonderful. And uh, it's been so nice to be able to have the beet greens you know, for our customers, as well as early beets. Oh, some stinging nettle. I will jump right on that before harvest. Um, Riley has had a very nice selection of edible flowers um, going for a while now. And uh, this is our viola slash pansy bed. And we tried to get a ton of unique colors. If you're interested in some of the... Uh, some of the cool, unique stuff. I would check out Baker Creek Seeds. They've got some just interesting stuff that you don't normally see. Like this is what they call a brush stroke. You tell me that's not gonna look good on a salad or on top of a, you know, whatever, a roll, a sandwich, like, oh, they just look so good. Uh, these have only been transplanted in for Oh, maybe two weeks. So this bed is really going to come alive and I will keep you posted. Let's go check out the unheated greenhouse. All right, here we are. So um, I, I can't remember what I've shown you and what I haven't. But anyway, we've got uh, moved our microgreens sort of both heated, unheated. I'm actually going to bring some of our microgreen racks in here. I think that they'll get enough light. We'll check it out. We'll make adjustments. That's what being out here all the time does. It allows you to observe what is working and what is not. All right. So this was a uh, full bed of spinach. We're going to get uh, a really good harvest off of this before it gets to come out of the ground. And I will be thinking about what's going to go in there next. This was a absolutely pathetic sowing of carrots. This is the exact opposite of the other greenhouse. It may look okay to you, but to me, this is 30% of the bed is being used. And when you're doing this to make money, that sucks, right? Like if this is just a hobby, oh, well, I'd pop a couple flowers in there and we'd call her a day. But I have learned loads and I'll show you what I learned when I take you out to the field. But those carrots should be coming out within the next four weeks. Um, we did have radishes in here, harvested those. And now these little kohlrabi, 
will turn into those. These are the guys that Zeb planted, uh, whatever, on our last video. And they are, they're ready to come out, really, a lot of them. So we will be harvesting some of those today uh, for some of the upcoming markets. Here's our second, six, uh, our first succession sowing or our second sowing of onions. We're going to have a mix in here of green and purple bunching onions as well as some of the pearl onions. Um, this was lettuce, got harvested a couple of times, we ripped it out. I did a full bed or a full section of arugula. This was arugula and mustard. I tore that out after a couple of cuts and put just mustard in there. So this greenhouse will end up probably with beans in it for the next uh, sowing. Uh, that way, if they're ready at the end of August, beginning of September, and we happen to get a, a cool night, I can turn a little bit of heat on here to salvage them for a day or two. All right, so tell you what, we'll take you out to the field. We'll walk those rows real quick. I try not to make these incredibly long, but you know, every year our farm grows. Every year we have more area to grow in. We're growing different varieties and yeah, I don't know what to say. It's really tough to keep these things short, but let's go out to the field. Okay, so this is a bit of a new area that we got told that we could use. When I get told that I can plant in other land, I plant in that land. So, this is, uh, this is exciting. This is a nice addition. This is a good, good sized area that we will use very, very well. So this is our third sowing of kohlrabi, which if you have a good memory of a couple seconds ago, this is bigger than the ones in the other greenhouse. Actually, no, that's a lie. So that would have been the first ones in the heated. Uh, the second one Zeb planted. This was the third one. And then the fourth one is in, in that greenhouse. We got a bunch of bachelor's buttons here, edible flower row down here. I'm trying to think of what else Riley has in there. She's got calendula in there. She's got a couple or three different types of marigold, nasturtiums. Uh, and then we've got a bunch of herbs. So this is uh, some cilantro that is trying its hardest to be coriander. Uh, we have a couple of different varieties of chamomile here. We are huge fans of chamomile and this will get harvested often. Uh, yeah, just a nice little mix. Yeah, I don't know what to say. I mean, we are, we're looking forward to, uh, to our herbs this year. Summer savory is just banging along. What else do we got? Uh, catnip, cat mint. If you've never tried that in a tea, you haven't lived yet. It is absolutely wonderful. A couple of different types of basil. This is some German chamomile. Yeah. What else? We got oregano and we got thyme and we've got lemon balm. And we got some flowers coming out. This is kind of a neat looking marigold. It's a little different style than what I'm used to. But it looks nice to me. Next week or so, this is going to look absolutely crazy. This is a whole row of borage. Uh, we have two different colors. We've got the traditional blue, and then we also have a white one. And that should be opening up here shortly. And then uh, we put in another bed of celeriac. Celeriac is certainly a fan favorite of our customers. It stores incredibly well. You can use the stalks throughout the season as a celery replacement for soups and stews. Uh, we've got some lemon cilantro in here. And then over here, we've got uh, some shiso. Uh, perella is another name for it. We're very, very excited about this. This is, uh, this is a staple in Asian cooking. And uh, we uh, love ourselves some Asian cooking so this went in the bed yesterday in fact i don't even have irrigation set up on that yet so i will get on that today but i've got a couple three more rows here or beds rather that i will uh figure out what we're gonna put in there it's uh it's a little dicey right now i think i have a few more things than i have room for but uh what are you gonna do red vein sorrel which is an absolutely beautiful plant love it 
little citrusy taste. When those leaves get bigger, you can use them as wraps. And then uh, some snapdragons. Over here is kind of my little fun area. This is just for us. Sorry, customers, but this is just for us. These are gonna be artichokes. My girls and I love barbecued artichokes. They take up a ton of room, so I spaced them, oh, I don't know, like six feet apart. I put them on little hills of chicken manure from last year. So, and then, again, just for us, we put in four rows of corn. I don't normally grow corn because it's, it's cheap like borscht, but I figured, what the heck, let's put some corn in, so we did. So we did. Hey, do you see that big area over there? Yeah, that's next. Okay. All right. So this is the new area that we got. I also got told that this area over here I could use. So everywhere that you see, to, you know, kind of worked up there, that is going to get beds made, as you see. And I put some seeds in the ground there yesterday. Now this was where we started. The first 20 two rows of this was what we had in our first year and I think we've kind of tripled up by now anyway these are some brussels that are brussling along we really won't pay too much attention to them until later got a couple of beds of round red beets um, they had a bit of a rough start when I went to harden them off they had a couple of nights of minus eight and then if you believe it or not, within about a week of that, we went up to 30 above. And that was extremely hard on them. In fact, I was very worried when we put them out. I shouldn't have been, because nature's amazing. And look at them romping along now. But uh, was since everything got transplanted, the girls, by the way, are absolute machines. They work harder than anybody that I've worked with before, because this was essentially all hand transplanted almost all of this which is uh kind of mind-boggling right and this was all in by may 2nd um some garlic we planted some absolutely massive cloves last year and interesting fun fact uh it is officially the 7th of june today yesterday or uh, three four days ago we noticed that the girls noticed not we They'll be like, what, what's this wee stuff? Um, we have scapes coming on. This is easily a month early, which I think just has to do with the weather. We've had three snaps of over 30, you know, plus, which is what, 80 plus in, uh, in American. And uh, we don't typically get that maybe once a year. Like we're in zone 3B. This is essentially Arctic tundra. But... Anyway, I digress. This is a bed of spinach that uh, overwintered. This will be our final harvest off of this bed. I will rip it out and put something in its place. Uh, these are long, uh, long beets, just like the ones in the greenhouse. And they are doing their thing. These will, uh, all the beet rows I'm showing you will be harvested uh, by the end of the month. And then transplants that we're starting uh, next Monday uh, will go into here whatever first part of july uh this was a bed of lettuce that overwintered and i decided to keep it and pop in the purple brussels as you can see i kind of figured that as i cut the lettuce the brussels would you know do their thing and they are this is going to be our last harvest off of that and then that lettuce will be out of there giving the brussels a bit more room uh this oh my goodness i forgot about this when i was doing our kohlrabi uh count so this is i don't know this is one of probably five different sowings of kohlrabi that's an entire bed of the three different colors that we're growing this year purple white and green uh this is a uh, a nice early season cabbage i put about 360 in there i don't know let's say 300 we'll get a decent 300 out of there uh they were coming in last year at i don't know four or five pounds super firm but the nice thing with these is they're ready in 60 days and when you've only got 100 frost free days they can't all be the uh the late storage variety these are our yellow beets 
and they became incredibly popular last year at market for us. The leaves are like, oh, they're just beautiful. And uh, we will be harvesting some of the greens today for our customers, another bed of garlic. I think we've got 3,600 garlic in this year. These are red Omera. It's the same red cabbage that we grew last year. Uh, this is about a 75 day air. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. They, they held really well in the field. I don't think I will do that again. I think when they're ready, I'll just, just yank the whole row and see if we can get something else in there before the end of the year. Now check out this carrot, you know, whatever, spacing, germination, whatever you want to call it. That's, if you don't think that's beautiful, then you have not seen my previous attempts at uh, seeding carrots. What I did was I changed things up on here and I used a seed roller that was much too big. And I figured like, if I have to go and thin things out, I will. But typically what I've found with carrots is that you can pack them in. They will create their own space. And uh, I haven't had any issues with, uh, you know, when the seeder pukes out too many, like I, I'm still pulling carrots out of there in 70 days, right? This is uh, broccolini. Became one of our favorites last year. I definitely love snacking on this when we're out. So we've got two beds of this. Uh, what the heck did we put in there? I think there's about 180 per bed. Um, our last row of garlic. And then um, this one is a white beet. This will be our first year growing that. And this one here is the um, Italian. Uh, the, what do they call it? Like a candy cane beet. It's got the, the red, the pink, the red, the pink circles in it when you cut it. Chiosia, I believe, is the variety. So this is our... Uh, Again, we'll start that and we'll have a whole nother bed of that for storage for the winter. So I've got four beds of carrots. Three of them had, had wonderful uh, seeding. And then this one, I must have ran out. So I did throw some more in there. This will be the last one that we harvest out of this side. So that'll catch up. And then here's two beds of rainbow carrots. And again, I think I might have figured out the whole seeding thing. That, they're both looking wonderful. This is our bed of uh, strawberries that we got given to us. So we said, heck yeah, the girls went through here. They probably took a good half a day and they went through and got every single weed out of here and uh, took all the old, you know, whatever. Yucky mulch off of there. We took a ton of the uh, little runner plants off, which we have since planted up. And we are getting a load of flowers. Girls are going to be happy. They love munching on those things. Our first bed of celeriac, which is looking awesome. What did I do here? I think this is my second sowing of turnips outside. Turnips uh, are a favorite of the flea beetle. And the first sowing got absolutely decimated. Gone. Like one day I could see them popping up like this. And then the next day they just, they weren't a thing. In the far back there, I did sow some uh, uh, parsley root. We tried that last year, it was awesome. That's a slow germinator, I'm not too worried about it. Five different types of kale. Let me show you, uh, let me show you the beauty. Oh, they're looking so good. Now we started harvesting a shade too early, like at this stage, because yeah, you can, you can come and rip off these small leaves, but we never let the plants kind of get mature because we were always harvesting the biggest leaves so we're exhibiting willpower this year we are leaving a bunch of these until they are you know tell they're a size of when we start harvesting we won't even be able to keep up this is a japanese flowering kale that's edible as well as ornamental and it's it's just stunning like looking at some of the colors on that i can only picture it on a market table or a customer order in a vegetable box and getting to see something like that. Like, you just don't get this kind of stuff out of the stores. You just don't. All right, we got a bunch of alliums. And again, they're, uh, the alliums, I, there's a few things that I would do different. Um, some of our seeds didn't come in when we had thought they were going to. I started them far later than I normally do. We'll, we'll see. We're just going to observe. And, uh, you know, 
if if I don't have to start them as early as I always have, then that would be nice to know. As would, nope, those need to be started in January. So we'll find out this year. Uh, some extra kale, cause you know, kale. All right, we've got our Swiss chard bed over here. This is, uh, this is one of our favorites. It's just so colorful and um, it stands out on a market table, let me tell you. I think there's five or six different types in this bright lights mix. Um, we've popped in some bergamot or some bee balm here. Got a little horseradish. Um, I always try and fill in, we try to fill in with herbs whenever we have an open spot. So we've got a bit of mustard up there that again, the flea beetles were unkind to. And this is mustard that the flea beetles were unkind to. Actually, I think this is arugula because they really like mustard. Let me show you what they do to mustard. These were seeded at the exact same time. As those guys down there that fared slightly better. If you think of the leaves of a plant as a solar panel, can you imagine trying to, trying to get any energy production with like 10% of your cells? Because that's exactly what happens when the young leaves get eaten. So this is going to get hold under probably today. We got some radishes up there, loose leaf lettuce, and even some head lettuce up there. Um, I believe I put more radishes in here. I'm trying to, it's, we've got a lot of stuff growing on, right? This is some loose leaf lettuce that's coming up. So that is two weeks behind this, which we will start harvesting. And next week, full bed of green beans. Boop, boop, boop. That's looking tight, right? And then uh, I was a little concerned that we didn't have enough onions. So I uh, purchased some sets, some of those little baby onions. Right? And uh, I don't know. We'll see. I think half of them are going to go to seed. I shouldn't be negative, but uh, here is a row of our personal potatoes. We have our wonderful potato farmer that takes care of all uh, our all year round spuds. These are uh, just a variety um, that we ha very much enjoyed last year Sarpomira. Um, that's, they're just, they get so big and they're nice baking. They're just a great all around spud. Uh, we've got some more beans. So those are the yellow ones. And then a little sparser on the germination was the purples. Back here is where I decided to put all of our storage uh, cabbage, like the 9,505 day varieties. So those will be in there all year. I think I've got about 160 all together. So if I can average 10 pounds, that's 1,600 pounds of cabbage right there it is. So, and then we got a little extra land and I'll show you that. All right, so there's the storage cabbage. I uh, had some extra beets, so I just popped them in here by the trees. Those are loving life. And if they don't work out, worst case scenario, you know, whatever, chicken food. All right, check it out parsnips baby that's a 120 foot bed over here is going to be where the rutabaga go but rutabaga is only about a 90 day crop and i think one of the mistakes i was making in the past is i would have that seeded in may right so by the time we harvest it in october it's it's not a 90 day thing anymore it's more like 180 and we always wondered why they were so not the way that we like them Threw in some uh, dill in here, and it's it's actually liking it over here in the shade. This is uh, um, it, this gets sunlight from now, so whatever six six thirty in the morning until about two thirty three in the afternoon, and then this is all shade. I'm tried tried some beets back here just to see how they do. Uh, tried a little bit of radish. That's some more of the where there. That's some more uh, of the 60 day cabbage. So we shall see how that does in the shade. But the game plan was gonna be, these are like I said, 120 feet. Um, I'm gonna do the three beds here. 
I want to have carrots in here for our long-term storage. So these are going to be like our winter harvested carrots. Um, I'll do three beds over there, all of orange. And then we also got told that we can use this area. So we weeded this a couple of days ago. The girls did. And um, I'm going to have, what? A bed of orange and two full beds of rainbow. So that's pretty exciting. And then um, we threw a row of patty pans, squash down here. There we go. All right, so there you go. There's a grand tour of what's growing right now. So if you're a customer, you know what's gonna be coming up. If you're a friend or family member, I apologize for not keeping you up to date. We are having a blast. We're balanced. We're still working our butts off. Like it's 14, 16 hour days, but we're not, we've kind of changed a little bit the philosophy on how we're going about things, which has led to a lot more, a lot more fun and less stress. So let me show you the last thing, which coincidentally it should have been the first thing because it's the happiest part of our existence out here. Check this out. Favorite part of our day. Anytime you get to spend some time over here with the chickens, with the boys, is a good time spent. Can you tell it's just about breakfast time? Good morning, boys. Ho, oh. oh, yeah. ho, ho, my little compost machines. Oh, they're so cute. All right. Thanks for sticking around if you have. Feel free to subscribe. That's also free. You can give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy gardening and growing. And to the melodious peepings of the flock behind me, we say uh, thanks from Thistle Hill Farms. We'll see you guys on the next one. <laughs>